Oh, hello, everybody. And is everybody well today? <laughs> I am so glad to hear it. And me? Well, I'm doing just fine. Except on this particular day when I'm recording this, by the way, this is in March when I'm making this video, it is zero degrees outside. Zero! But the sun is shining and that means it's a great day to go for a flight. Hmm. So where are we going to go to today? Hmm. Good question. Well, MB944 wrote me and said, could I do a flight between Juneau and Anchorage in Alaska? Ha! <laughs> oh, if there's going to be a place that's colder he than here in England, it would be Alaska at this time of year. But why not? Why not indeed? It's a great place and the scenery between Juneau and Alaska is really beautiful. You've got all of those mountains on the way. And I hope that we'll get to see some of that and I'll try to be a tourist and take some pictures. It may be of interest, I don't know, but when I was applying to be a priest, way, way back when the dinosaurs were just beginning to go extinct, <laughs> I sent out applications to many different dioceses. I also sent out applications to dioceses in Alaska. There were two then. There was uh, Anchorage and Fairbanks. I was also encouraged to send out applications to Canadian dioceses as well. That's in the Yukon and in the Northwest Territories. Why those places? Well, they were desperate to get priests but priests with a particular skill set. And it just so happened that I had the skill set. What was it, you ask? I was a pilot. You know, they don't go and use a car to go between the parishes in Alaska or the Northwest Territories or Yukon. They use one of these. Yes, that particular one is a Cessna, and it was in Canada. But yes, I have actually been up into Alaska, and I have flown in and out of lakes and things like that around the area because they wanted to see if I knew how to fly. Of course, I do and could. And it's a lot smaller than what I've been used to, but it was a lovely little plane. And the scenery is great. Of course, there are a few drawbacks to being in Alaska. And one is, there's an awful lot of white stuff. Two, there's an awful lot of sub-zero temperatures. And the next one, and in the wild area, the mosquitoes can get to be as big as dogs. <laughs> Or at least that is what they feel like when they're biting you. <laughs> so I actually decided on a different diocese and I went with the Diocese of Tucson in Arizona. Yes, desert, much warmer. <laughs> but enough of that. Today's flight going from Juneau to Anchorage is a lovely one. Now, I checked it out. And Alaska Airlines have 737s that go between these two points. Here's a, a little video showing a 737 in flight with Alaska Airlines. Isn't that magnificent? Look at those mountains. 
So Alaska Airlines flight 73, 73. So that would be AS73. If you want to look it up, put that into the flight aware and it will bring up the flights of history of that particular route. Now Juno Airport is going to be standard P3D. Uh, and I'm using P3D version 5.2, by the way. So the scenery is really quite good for the default. I couldn't find any commercial scenery for this one, but I think this one will do very well. And the scenery that I have for Anchorage, Alaska is made by Aerosoft. So Anchorage, P-A-N-C, Airport scenery is made by Aerosoft. Right, well, MB944, I don't know where you live. I don't know if your aff affinity for things in Alaska means that you live there, but if you do, then let's see if we can fly over the top of your house, shall we? And let's go on in now to pre-flight and check the routes, the weather, and make ourselves a flight plan. Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking here at Alaska Airlines Flight 73, as the designators right there. This particular one arrived over 17 hours ago at Gate Charlie 1 in Anchorage, right over here and it left gate three in Juno. Looking at the flight, here it is. It's a pretty straightforward flight. They just fly a little bit over the tip of Canadian territory there, and they go on up into Anchorage. Having a look at the side, looks like the cruise altitude was 34,000 feet. And if you notice here, it says B737, so that's the 737-700 and not the 800 model that we are in. It says the taxi time, oh, it's 16 minutes. I don't know why it should take so long unless there was an awful lot of snow or something there. I don't know what we're going to expect. But the taxi time at arrival was six minutes, so not bad. Now here's the information for PAJN, which is Juneau, Alaska. And here you can see where it is. There's a lot of mountains around, so there's going to be uh, quite a bit of unsettled weather directions here. Currently, wind is calm, visibility 10 statute miles, no clouds under 12,000 feet. Brilliant. VFR. Temperature is a <laughs> oh, minus five degrees Celsius. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Pressure is a little bit higher. 2992 is the standard. So this is just a little elevated. But the history is showing that it is VFR and not bad. But here you can see the weather. Let me zoom in a little bit on here and see. It looks like the wind may be coming more from the northeast. Let's see what happens. If we take the wind coming in from the northeast, then it looks like this may be the direction of the runway. And that would be the 26. So that would be this one, runway 26 right there. And since we'll be parked somewhere in here, I suppose that may be the cause for such a long taxi time. Or maybe they were busy. Don't know. We will find out when we get there. Now, looking at our destination, here's Anchorage. And here you can see the wonderful waterway there. It's a lovely airport is Anchorage. I remember that quite well. I've flown in and out of that also as a pilot. 
and it says the wind is 350 degrees at six knots. Visibility 10 statute miles, clouds few at 9,500 feet. Scattered 12,000. Temperature minus three. And the altimeter is pretty much the same as it is in Juno. Not, not much difference, but it is VFR. Looking at the runways, well, not sure which one it will be, but uh, the others have been coming in either on this one down here, which is seven right, or the three three. That's this one. Those are the two runways that uh, recent traffic seem to have been using. I don't know which one will be assigned, but we'll we'll check. All right, let's go into sim brief and let's make ourselves this flight plan. We are Ryanair, we are 186, and we're departing from PAGN. And we're going to go to PANC. There's the alternate. I'm not sure where that one is at, but we'll have a look at that in just a moment. We'll put in our airframe that we've saved. And here you can see is our registration. We're cruise profile six. Schedule flight time, two hours. Departure is going to be on 08, it says. Ah, and arrival on 33, which is one of the runways that has been in use. We, are, of course, are going to be full and we're going to have one ton of caviar and champagne because this is a special flight. Altitude, we'll leave the, that as auto because we don't know what the present conditions are going to be aloft yet, but, uh, but Sim brief does, and they will bring all that up. Here is the route. Well, we'll have to see what that one looks like. Well, it looks like it comes in and then it's a pretty much straight shot up to Anchorage. Okay. And right here, that's the Kenai Municipal Airport. That is the alternate that it's been given in case we can't get into Anchorage. All right. Then let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll go in and generate the flight plan. Well, here's the flight plan that flight uh, that Simbrief has given for us and there's the origin destination alternate and we're flying at flight level 360 today and the airtime is one hour 33 block fuel is seven just a little over seven tons there there's the routing the first part right here that's going to be the SID, the standard instrument departure, and here we're coming in on the Yeska 6 arrival star. And there's the route. And going down, we'll have a look now and see what we've got here. This says we're Ryanair 186. There's our flight level. And there is our route. And here we are. This is the alternate should things go very bad. We are cost index six. We'll need that information. We'll also need the average wind for our journey to program that into the FMC. The block fuel is right here. Reserves are going to be 2,250 and trip and taxi is 4,294. No tankering recommended, it says. Looking at the wind information on our descent, 
Here you can see that at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet, the wind speed and direction is 233 at 16 knots and 15,000 feet, 185 at 15 knots and at 10,000 feet, it is 183 at 12 knots. Temperatures are all in the minus. You can see all of this. My goodness, it's all, all in the minus. Cold, cold, cold. 360. We'll be at 360. So this will be our flight level right there. And minus 57 is going to be expected. All right, let's go down and have a look and see the weather. Well, here you can see that there's a flight level 310. There's quite a bit of activity pushing in from the North Pacific area. So it's going to be hitting Alaska from that direction, but it doesn't look too bad at the moment. And going to... This is probably the closest one that we have to our flight route. This is 340. We're going to be flying at 360 flight level. And here you can see what is happening at that altitude. It is all headwinds. Headwinds, my goodness me. So we're going to be facing that as we go into Anchorage. And here's the vertical profile, starting out here from Juno and climbing up. And notice we will be climbing above the tropopause right here. But we'll be on that cruise point right here and then we'll make our descent down into Anchorage right here. And yes, there are going to be some significant mountains on our route. Look at that. Well, here we are in Navigraph. We click flights, new flights from Simbrief and bring in the flight right there. And there's the, the route from beginning to end. Clicking here, we'll open the charts list. We need the airport information, which is right here. And I'm going to pin that to the bottom. Uh, we're going to be somewhere in this vicinity. I'm not exactly sure where we'll be when we, uh, when we park. And we're going to be taking off on runway 08. So 08, that means we'll be taxiing up here and then departing in that direction. According to this, we'll be using the Assort 2 departure. So that swings us around and then takes us off in this direction in order to make our route going to the north. Okay, we'll pin that also. Now looking at the destination, we're going to need the airport and we'll need to know the parking gates and coordinates at our destination. We're coming in on runway 33, so I'll go down here and there it is. And I'm going to pin that to the bottom. And we'll be using the I'll pin this one. This is the the Yeska 6 arrival. Coming in at Johnstone Point and all the way in at that point. Okay, we have our route. Let's go on into the cockpit and warm things up, okay? Oh, there you are. Do come on in and take your seat. Remember, let's buckle up and certainly 
Have a look at this beautiful scenery. I mean, this is some magnificent scenery. And I am using P3D's version 5.2, and this is their default scenery here. So I need to show you this in some detail. It really is very good. Looking out here to the left, you can see they have a jetway. Nothing particular spectacular or remarkable about that. And there's your stick, you know, your pretty much standard block P3D. But look at the rest of the scenery. I mean, those mountains in the background all covered with snow. And over there, look at that. This is Juno. And the scenery here is just spectacular. Just spectacular. Well, this is going to be a lovely, a lovely flight. We've got some good views, good weather, clear. It's, it should be clear all the way in. The only thing is, it's cold out there, ha! so we'd better get the heat going, don't you think? All right. Okay. Turn on the battery. Make sure that we've got 26 volts because we're going to need to fuel the pumps here and then turn on the APU. So the APU, of course, is located in the back and it provides us, of course, with electrical power from which we'll then be able to blow the heat coming from the bleed units in the in the engine and over here you can see we have the forward service hatches open equipment those are the stairs that are going down and the Engine gas temperature is rising very nicely here and it's coming down. As soon as this light comes on, it'll be blue. As soon as this comes on, then I'm going to switch from the batteries, which are 26 uh, or 7 volts. And I'm going to, there we go. Now I'm using 115 volts right there. Good. Now I'm going to... Turn on the IRS, that's our sat-nav system. Turn on the galley, you never know, someone may come and bring us a cup of tea or hot chocolate on a day like today. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Then over here, we've got the left and the right window heat. We want to make sure everything is good and warm today. I am definitely with the temperatures the way they are, it's minus five outside. So I definitely am going to turn on the probe heat and turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. Then over here, let's get the heat going. So that's the APU bleed. And then turn on the packs and listen. There it is. There's that rush of air that's now flooding the entire aircraft with some warm, warm air. And that's what we need. Yes. Okay. Now that we've got all of this pretty much going, I'm going to turn on the steady light to let the ground crew know that we are in here and that we're programming and our passengers are getting ready to load. Right, now let's go in and program the FMC. Here you can see we have the latest air rack and we have the latest program in it. And there are no errors. So we do position and of course we are going to start out at PAGN. So PAJN. I'm not going to put in a gate because we don't really know what the gates are here. But we will use, the, I'm going to go next page, 
and I'm going to look here at what the GPS has returned for us is our starting point. So they've actually worked this out and so I'm going to put that into temporary, go back to previous page and put it in there. Now our starting point is in the system. Okay, next I go to root, origin is put in the PAJ and again and we're going to go to PA and C. We are Ryanair, R-Y-R, and we're 186. I'm going to go to next page now and start to put in the flight plan. Now the flight plan, I'm taking it directly from the flight plan that was given to us by Simbri. So, the first thing we do is we go direct to SSR. So, SSR. And then we take the Juliet 541. So, Juliet 541. And that will take us to Yak. Y-A-K and then we take the Juliet 501 Juliet 501 and that will take us to the Johnson point so that's J-O-H And then we activate that and execute. Go to fix, and this is where we put in the P, A, and C for our destination. And we need to have a four mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle around our destinations and a 30 mile circle. The 30 mile circle indicates that that's the point to where we can actually contact the tower and 10 miles that's when we need to be very much in readiness for landing four miles that's when Ryanair likes you to drop the gear now we'll go to the descent page go to forecast and transition level in the United States is flight level 180 180 is the flight level for transition level and the transition altitude as well so we're going to need the descent information for each of these flight levels coming in the Q and H at our destination is 1036 1036 and now we'll put the information in for our descent at 200 it is 233 at 16 so 233 at 16 at 150 it is 185 at 15 185 at 15 and at 10,000 feet it is 183 at 12 183 at 12 and execute that. Now we go into departures and let's listen in to the ATIS to find out what the active runway is and that would be 135 decimal 2. Juno International Airport Information Kilo 21510 Zulu Wind Calm Visibility Greater than 20 miles Sky Condition Clear Temperature Minus 5 2 point Minus 7 Altimeter 1039 Landing and departing Runway 8 VFR Aircraft Say Direction of Flight All Aircraft Red Back Hold Short Instruction Advise Controller on Initial Contact You have Kilo We have Kilo and Runway 8 is what it is So I'm going to put in Runway 8 Juno 6 departure, that's the one. And we'll be making the SSR as our transition. Execute that. 
departures and arrivals go to our destination, it is still proposed that we're going to be coming in on Arnav Runway 33. So I'm going to put that in. We're coming in on the Yeska 6 arrival. So I'm going to put that one in. And transition is Johnson. Now I'm going to go into legs and I'm going to switch to plan and I'm going to go through each of these to see what we actually have. I'm going to see if I can record this. So now I'm just going to go through each of the steps to see what happens here. Making sure that we don't have any root discontinuity. There's the SSR that uh, we'll be making our turn at and then we go up here this is going up the coastline and castle uh, so there's the johnson intercept now i'm going to bring the perky that's this and bring it up over the top of ted and then i'm going to step through this to see what it gives us and here you can see it brings us into Herky and straight down the runway for a landing at runway 33. That is what we hope is going to happen. Continuing the steps, this is what our missed approach pattern will be if we cannot land for any particular reason. Right, switching back now to map, I'm going to turn on the weather on my side and I'm going to activate the data. I'm going to turn on the terrain on your side and look at that, it's already starting to show the mountains around here. Terrain is going to be very important, so as the first officer, I'm hoping that you'll warn me that there's a mountain in the way. Hope that we don't get to that, but what can I say? And there's the data on that also. I'm going to turn the TCAS on and switch this to RTO. Now I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and that light just went out. Now we're ready to put in the rest of the route and perform the initialization. Now our plan fuel, we have 2,250 for the reserve, the trip is 4,286, so that comes to 6,536 kilograms, which would be 6.5, so 6.5 plan fuel. Reserves 2.3 is close enough. Double click this to get the calculation. Cost index is 6. Cruise altitude is 360. The cruise wind at our, at our flight altitude is 293 at 33. So 293 at 33. Transition altitude in the United States is 18,000 feet. So 180. Execute that. Go to N1 limit. We're not going to do any noise abatements or anything like that. We're just going to accept the minus 5. So slash and minus 5. And take off. We're going to be flaps 10 today. I'm going to double click this. That will give me the center of gravity and what we'll need on the trim wheel. And over here, a single click on each one gives me the values for V1, rotation, and liftoff. Right, we have the information that we need now. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put in 36,000 feet into our cabin altitude. Now, this is for pressurization. If we don't do this, we're going to have some very upset and very sick passengers. The 
Elevation of the runway at our destination is 122. So I'm going to put in 100 for our landing altitude. This is just simply for the pressurization. Okay, so far so good. I'm also going to put in our cruising altitude into this, into the MCP. I know that we are normally supposed to get all the permissions and everything from ATC on this, but we always presume that we're going to get it. Since we're departing on runway 8, our, we need to set the course for 8085. 85 is the course heading that we need to set in here for the runway departure. So 85, and I'll do yours too. And there it is. Right, I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the hatch. Everybody's on board now. That's the noise of the electric stairs coming up. Our decision height at our destination is 463, so I'm going to put 463 into the barometer setting here, so 463. That will then warn us when we get down to minimums. Right, I think we are now ready to do the check. Everybody's on board. Heat is looking good. Everything's clear across the board there. So the fuel is on, check windows all locked and seat belt signs are on, door lights are out. MCP, ah, we need to put in 146 into the MAC for this. Now I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on there. And I push the VNAV and the LNAV button and they both return a green light saying that the programming is good. So I'm now going to arm the throttle so that part is done. So MCP is finished. Uh, Takeoff check, speeds are all correct. CDU free flight is correct. It's all done there. Rudd air alarm trim, taxi takeoff briefing. Now, since we are going to need to go in that direction to get to the end of the runway, we will need to have our nose turn to the right so that we can go out and then turn right to taxi to the end of runway 08. Now, anti-collision lights can now go on at this point. And I'll also start the Navigraph charts. Now, down here you can see the Navigraph charts have appeared and you can see that with that red arrow, that is where we are. So now we have to go to the end of runway 8. So that is taking the Charlie, but we haven't got our permission yet. So we're going to go out to the north, so we'll do... Juno ground, Ryanair 186, with Mike, request taxi for takeoff departure to the north. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 8, via taxiway, Golf Alpha 1, Alpha, contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 8, via taxiway, Golf Alpha 1, Alpha, Ryanair 186. Alright, we have our clearance and... We will follow that. So, if you're ready, let's contact the people on the ground to give us a pushback, shall we? We need the nose to the right, 90 degrees, select the tug, and are you set? 
Which engine would you like to start today? The number one or number two? The left or the right? It's your choice. Oh, you'd like to start number one first? Good choice. So I'm going to switch this then here to the generator one, which right now, of course, is zero because the engines are not running. But when they do spool up and they get ready, then I'll show 115 volts up in here. All right, we're ready to do the pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Okay, now as soon as we move, I'm going to switch engine number one to GRD, which is the starting position. Brakes released, here we go. All right, I've switched it over there. Now over here, you can see that the start valve has opened and the engine is starting to spin up. The N2 is coming up very nicely. When this gets to 24, then I'll introduce the fuel. Engine gas temperature is showing minus 5 because it is cold outside. But once that fuel is going in and it ignites, there you go. Look how quickly the heat comes on in those engines. Wow. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it did. Engine gas temperature is coming up very nicely. Yes, we have a good start there. And next I'm looking, there is the engines, you can hear them. Now I'm looking for 115 volts up here. We have that. So now I'm switching to engine number two to start. Push back complete, parking brake please. Parking brake is set. Start valve has opened. Brake set. The, and the N2 is starting to spin up. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Now the N2 is warming up very nicely. As soon as this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Look how cold it is. My goodness me. Those engines are cold. Now we're bringing in the fuel. It's igniting. Look how quickly it heats up. Those jet engines, just pure flame. Wow. And the low oil pressure light has gone out. It's starting to come up. That's good. The engines have ignited. Yes, we're doing fine. Now I'm going to look for 115 volts up here. And as soon as this little red tick mark goes off to show that the generator is running smoothly, then I'll switch from the APU power. See, the, there it goes off. Then I'll switch from the APU power. I'm now running on the electrical generators in the main engines. So I'll go over here and turn on the heat again for the passengers, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Now I'm going to turn on the taxi lights, because we're going to be taxiing to the active runway which is down in that direction. And I'm going to go to flaps 10. And I'm making one adjustment to the max speed for departure because there's been a small correction. So, there we go. The flaps are in transit. We have green lights. Everything is good across the board. Attendance. We're on our way. Hold tight. Brake is off. Make sure that there's nothing coming. give it a little boost so we're going to go down here and then turn right at the taxiway on the alpha taxiway and this is beautiful scenery but look at all that snow
no. <laughs> yes. This. If you like skiing and you like to do snowball fights, well then you're in the right place for that. Here we go. And Juno is a really nice little town, it really is. Here is up. Caution, terrain, 
we're above 10,000 feet. Air is stable enough, so I'm going to turn off the seatbelt sign and let the passengers go wander about. And we are on our way. Well, we did all right. We made a nice takeoff, lovely scenery, plenty of snow-capped mountains around here. I'm going to have to take a lot of video as we make our journey along going up to Anchorage. So, if you'd like to go wander into the back, I have that complimentary champagne and caviar just waiting to be consumed. And then, as soon as we're on our descent and approach, I'll give you a shout so that you can come back up front and help with the landing, okay? I'll see you in a bit.
clear for 2-5 left, so I'm going to need to go into flaps 10. Lights are now on, engines continuous, and I'm going to have to set up another chart. If we're going then on 2-5 left,
see the runway, we are set for landing. We're just now crossing over Foxon Waypoint. Well, we do have a little ways to go straight down here. 
until we get to gotta make sure I'm driving straight here. Okay, and doing the clean up. Look at this, this is really, really detailed scenery. And this is Anchorage, Alaska. Pretty impressive, isn't it? And the scenery, mountains everywhere. That looks like the fire station there on the left. Fortunately, we did not need their professional services today. <laughs> Very detailed scenery. Clear to land runway 25 left. Clear to land runway 25 left. Pacifica 282. Right, we go down here, we go uh, past the north terminal and we go to the Lima Junction. So let's look for the Lima Junction. terminal over there and then we'll find ourselves a place to park there's one coming in nicely look at that just drifting in oh and he's down all right I'll stick my hand out turning left here out for the kamikazes and there's certainly plenty of them I'll have another look at the parking oh so right over there then okay so I 
go up here, all right, and then over there. So it's one of those. Those are the Charlie stands right in front of me. Coming into the Charlie 3, that's directly ahead of us. That is if we don't get run into by these kamikazes. Okay, everything is pretty good. Doors are open, passengers are getting out. We are right here at Stand Charlie 3, exactly where we want it to be. Good, everything is cleaned up. So, fuel off, APU off, battery off. And shutdown is complete. Well, we made it into Anchorage. This is certainly different from the Anchorage that I experienced back in the 70s. That's a long time ago. And then I came in briefly in the 80s, but I didn't notice too much of anything because I was doing a lot of things outside. Uh, exploring a little bit of the Diocese of Anchorage, which meant flying in and out on those little float planes. A lot of interest there. Certainly it was different. But the scenery was pretty magnificent. But once we were above the clouds, there wasn't much to see below. We lost a lot of that. But then coming through the clouds and breaking out below, we were surrounded by mountains and mountains were everywhere just as well we had no engine problems we could have been in a world of hurt couldn't we <laughs> well i hope that you enjoyed the flight the p3d scenery of course 
was default for Juno, but this is by Aerosoft and it is magnificent scenery. It really is detailed. Beautiful scenery. Great. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the champagne and caviar. I hope that we took good care of you while you were on board. And I look forward to seeing you on another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.